Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru and today we are checking out our fourth RTX 3080 partner card as we are looking at Palette's RTX 3080 Gaming Pro OC. So far we have already reviewed the Asus Tough Gaming, we've looked at the Gigabyte Eagle OC as well as the MSI Gaming X Trio. So if you have seen our reviews of those cards, you will know that Palette certainly has its work cut out to impress us. With a 30 MHz factory overclock, this palette card also comes with a triple fan cooler, RGB lighting and a metal backplate. But again, the same could be said for all the other 3080s we have reviewed so far. So in this video, we're going to be seeing just how well this card performs, how effective that cooler is, how loud is it under load, and we'll also talk about some gaming performance. Before we get into any of that though, I do actually want to say a few words on the whole RTX 3080 crashing debacle and the supposed reason being the use of certain capacitors. The reason I am bringing this up here is that the Palette was actually the first RTX 3080 where I experienced any of these issues. None of the other cards I tested gave me any problems, but during about five to six hours of use, I did experience three crashes to desktop when using the Palette Gaming OC. That happened while I was using the 456.38 driver and actually during my testing Nvidia came out with the 456.55 driver which supposedly fixed any stability issues. And in my case I can say that certainly is true. Once I switched over to that driver I didn't experience any more crashes. Considering the Gaming Pro OC has a combination of SP caps and MLCCs and it still exhibited crashing until we updated the driver to me, it certainly seems like the whole problem really was more of a driver issue than a capacitor issue. Looking closer, we were able to see that this new 456.55 driver did actually reduce the GPU's overall frequency to voltage curve. So was Nvidia's fix just to nerf the GPU's boost clocks? Well, based on my testing, the answer is no. We put the Gaming Pro OC through a 30 minute 3D Mark time by stress test using the 456.38 driver and then again with the 456.55 driver. Overall clock speed behavior was essentially identical between the two as you can see from this graph. Yeah, there are a handful of points where the GPU boosted fractionally higher using the original driver, but taken across the entire 30 minute run, both drivers saw the GPU record an average frequency of 1825 MHz. As for the games we retested as well, we once again saw no difference in performance between the two drivers. Frame rates weren't exactly identical, but this really is just more a case of run-to-run -run variation and is well within margin for error. Overall, there is absolutely no meaningful difference between the two drivers in terms of gaming performance. So honestly, that is really all I wanted to say on the issue. I did just want to cover it as part of this review purely because this is actually the first GPU where I experienced any crashing, but the driver fixed it and it doesn't perform any differently. So in my opinion, at least that is, you know, the matter closed and put behind us. So we're now going to move on to talk about the card itself, diving into the rest of the review, I guess. Starting off with a look at the design then, we can see that Pallet is using a black plastic shroud, but what makes this slightly more unique is the fact that Pallet is actually screwed on a metal plate on top of the plastic shroud, and this just helps keep the design a little bit more interesting. Personally, I don't think it's the best looking GPU I've seen, although that is obviously going to be subjective, but it's certainly not ugly and it is color neutral, so I can't really complain. We can also take a look at the three fans Palette is using as part of its cooling design, and these each measure 85 millimeters in diameter. Palette calls the overall fan design its Turbo Fan 3.0 design, and this means each fan actually uses dual ball bearings, and they come with IP5X certification. Another area we always like to talk about is, of course, the overall size of the card. So the Gaming Pro OC actually measures in at 294 by 112 by 60 millimeters. So it is still a pretty long and pretty thick card. It will take up three slots in your case. But what actually interests me most here is the overall height of the card as it is no taller than the standard PCIe slot. All of the other cards we have reviewed have been significantly taller. So this could be an area where the palette appeals if you have a particularly narrow case, for instance. Additionally, palette does also include a plastic support bracket in the box 
So if you do have any GPU sag, you can just screw this in and it should eliminate the issue. Moving on now to the backplate. This is a full length design, but we can see a number of honeycomb cutouts towards the end of the card, just to allow air to pass directly through the heatsink and out the back of the card. It's a curious color backplate as well. It's almost bronze, depending how the light hits it. And personally, I have to say, I really like this. It's just something a little bit different compared to all the usual dark gray and black backplates we are used to seeing. Around the front of the card as well, we can see we just need two eight pin power connectors. And as for our display outputs, these are the standard allocation with three DisplayPort 1.4a ports and then one HDMI 2.1. Moving on then, when we come to disassembly, I have my real first complaint about the overall design. And that's because, as you can see from this B-roll, simply by removing the heatsink from the PCB, you can see that all of the thermal pads used on the memory modules actually just tore in half. That wasn't me trying to specifically prize them off, it was literally just from taking the heatsink off. This isn't the end of the world, it's just a little bit annoying, especially if you're the type of buyer who, you know, a year or two down the line, you would open up the card anyway, possibly to replace the thermal paste. If you are that kind of person, I would definitely recommend having a spare set of thermal pads on hand, but I would have liked to see either the use of higher quality thermal pads here, or maybe it's just a mounting pressure issue, I'm not honestly too sure but it is just a pain that as soon as we took the heatsink off, these thermal pads did rip. For the PCB itself though, we can see Palette is using a reference design, so it's a 14 phase VRM for the GPU with two phases for the memory. That memory is of course from Micron with those GDDR6X modules, which run at 19 gigabits per second. As for the heatsink, this is actually covered by a large aluminium alloy die cast plate. And this does contact with the memory and the VRM via those thermal pads. Beneath that plate, we can also take a look at the two separate fin stacks, and these are connected by six six millimeter nickel plated heat pipes. Finally, the metal back plate does also make contact with the back of the memory modules via more thermal pads. So that is it for our look at the card and we'll now move on to talk about performance. For all of our testing we used our standard GPU test system which has been provided by PC Specialist. This comprises an Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1GHz on all cores and that is paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard. We also use 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory running at 3600MHz. We use the 456.55 driver for all the data you are about to see for the Gaming Pro OC. Starting off with our thermal performance then, the Palette card does well here. We saw peak GPU temperature hitting 70 degrees during our 30 minute stress test with a steady state result of 69 degrees. This is a little warmer than the Gigabyte Eagle OC and the Asus Tough Gaming but it still marks a 6 degree reduction in peak temperature compared to NVIDIA's Founders Edition, while it is also 3 degrees cooler than MSI's Gaming X Trio. In terms of noise, we recorded 40 decibels on our sound meter when testing the Gaming Pro OC. This is definitely easy on the ears, it's not a loud card and it does actually put it on level pegging with the Gigabyte Eagle. Technically yes, it is louder than the Founders Edition and the Asus Tough Gaming when using the Performance BIOS, as both of those cards recorded noise levels at 39 decibels. However, to the human ear, I couldn't say that the difference would actually be perceptible. For those interested as well, this noise reading came when the fans were running at 48% or around 1890 RPM. Next up is system-wide power draw, and this is actually fractionally lower for the Gaming Pro OC than we saw from the Founders Edition. This is perhaps a little surprising, but again, there isn't a lot in it. Similarly, we can see that trend remains the same when looking at GPU-only power. Despite both the Gaming Pro OC and the Founders Edition having a 320 watt power target, the Gaming Pro OC pulled just shy of that amount averaging 316 watts based on the GPU-Z board power metric. So far so good then for the Gaming Pro OC, 
and we'll now move on to talk about a few game benchmarks. We're only going to be looking at 4K data in this video, but if you do want to see our 1440p and even 1080p benchmarks, you can head over to the written article on kitguru.net. Starting off with control then, here we can see the Gaming Pro OC averages 51 FPS at 4K. This is just one FPS below the Nvidia Founders Edition, which works out as a 2% performance margin, so really not much at all. In Death Stranding, the margins are actually even finer, with the Palette GPU averaging 100 FPS at 4K, compared to 101 FPS for the Founders Edition. Realistically, the gaming experience between the two is identical, even if the Gaming Pro OC is fractionally slower on paper. The same also goes for Gears 5, where we can see the Gaming Pro OC is once more a single frame slower than Nvidia's Founders Edition. This is a difference of a single percent, so there's nothing in it at all. Finally, Red Dead Redemption 2 sees both the Gaming Pro OC and the Founders Edition record an average frame rate of 84 FPS at 4K, so an exact tie between these two GPUs. So while we've not gone through all the games we tested, the trends we did see were very consistent. On average, the Gaming Pro OC is 1% slower than Nvidia's Founders Edition. To be clear, I really don't think this is, you know, a significant point whatsoever. The fact is, in the real world, we're only talking a difference of between 1 to 2 FPS, so nobody is going to be able to tell the difference between the GPUs just by playing games. However, the fact does remain that this was a consistent trend, and it can actually be explained when looking at the GPU boost clock behaviour. In a nutshell, the Gaming Pro OC just wasn't boosting as high as the Founders Edition during our testing. It wasn't by much, but it was consistently about 30 MHz slower, and you can see that from our scatter graph comparing the clock speed of both cards. In fact, averaged across the entirety of our 30 minute stress test, the Gaming Pro OC recorded a GPU frequency of 1825 MHz, compared to 1856 MHz for the Founders Edition. Now, this doesn't mean that the palette was thermal throttling or anything like that. In fact, it stayed above its rated boost clock of 1740 MHz at all times during our testing. It simply comes down to that the Nvidia Founders Edition was just boosting slightly further. This can be explained by a number of reasons or potentially a combination, but for the most likely two, I would say it's possible that Nvidia's VRM would help as it does have a 15 phase solution for the GPU compared to 14 phases for the palette card. And then the other possible explanation I would say is just the silicon lottery. It's possible that our gaming pro OC just isn't the best GA102 GPU going. At the end of the day though, we are talking about very, very fine margins, but it is still interesting to look at nonetheless. Of course, we did also try manual overclocking just to see how far we could push the card. The Gaming Pro OC lets us bump up the power limit to 109%, so about 349 watts, and there we could add 80 MHz to the GPU core and 850 MHz to the memory, bringing total speeds up to 20.7 gigabits per second. As expected, the real-world performance gains from this overclock aren't really that big. At worst, we saw just a 3% improvement to frame rate in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and at best, the extra frequency netted us improved frame rates of 5% in Total War Saga Troy. This has been the case for all the RTX 3080s we have reviewed so far, however, so it's certainly not an issue with the palette card itself. More that 3080 has simply been delivered right on the edge of its performance limits. So that brings us to the end of our video at its conclusion time. Overall, I have to say that Palette's RTX 3080 Gaming Pro OC is a very solid card. Its cooler is fine, noise levels are pretty good, and it also performs bang on with what we would expect from a 3080. The main problem it has is simply that the competition is so good. Take the Asus Tough Gaming 3080 for instance. That has an all aluminium shroud while it is actually cooler, quieter and faster than the Gaming Pro OC while also having the benefit of dual BIOS which is a feature the Gaming Pro OC lacks. 
Pallet has also told us that the suggested retail price for the Gaming Pro OC is £739.99. So that is actually £50 above the MSRP for the Asus Tough Gaming. The problem with that though is of course that no cards are simply available at those prices. So it's not something I really want to touch on too much here as when availability does hopefully increase at least by 2021, hopefully the pricing situation has changed. At the end of the day though, the Pallet Gaming Pro OC is a solid card, it's just not quite as good as something like the Asus Tough Gaming. That doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it, it's just going to come down to, like I said, pricing and availability. If you can find it at a good price, it is still going to do you a very solid job. That is going to do it for this review though guys, so if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up, let me know your thoughts down below, are you still on the hunt for a 3080? Do let me know your thoughts. Additionally, hit subscribe if you haven't already and you can also ding that notification bell. While you're there, why not check out a link to our Discord server in the description and it would be awesome if you guys would even consider backing us on Patreon where in return you get to see some of our content early and you can also access some exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.